Pizza Dragon is sort of a unique experience for me, as I've never actually seen the original Pizza Dragon, so this was a rare opportunity for me to go into a live action remake with no idea of what to expect. Now, I often felt like that might have possibly hurt me going into these um, live action versions because I have an idea in my head as to how these are supposed to end because, you know, I just saw the original. And I think I've probably seen uh, the original versions, whether it be The Jungle Book, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, I've probably seen them about a hundred times each, probably over the course of my life. And that is really sad because from the moment I watched, from, from the moment this movie started playing, the moment Peach Dragon started playing, I promise you, I could guess the ending to this movie I'd never seen before better than I could have guessed every other movie I'd seen a hundred times before. I just, because, oh my god, this movie's dull. This movie's really dull. And I think that's the biggest sin any movie can create. It, it's, 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 it's just terrible. Like, here's the thing. I do not really like Maleficent or Maleficent 2, and we all know how Frozen is the bane of my existence, but there's at least stuff to talk about with those movies. Like, I can explain why I think Frozen is bad. I can explain why I think Maleficent is bad, why Maleficent 2 is bad, you know? And we can have a back and forth about that. You can agree, you can disagree, but there's nothing of interest happening in Peach Dragon, all right? At least this remake. So after that, I went and saw the original. And uh, it's also boring, but it's better acted, and you can sort of see where they're going for with this one. The original is very much Disney's attempt at trying to recapture Mary Poppins. There's no complexity to the original Peach Dragon. And that's fine, but also there's nothing happening. Which is weird, because it looks like there's a lot happening. So, the premise of Pete's Dragon is this. There's a boy. His name is Pete. He has a friend. That's a dragon. In the original, he can turn invisible. Actually, both versions he can turn invisible. And Elliot and Pete go to a town. For no real reason. Just like, hey, there's a town, let's go. But Elliot, you gotta turn invisible. And that's how the adventure ensues. There's a boy who's talking to a dragon that no one can see. Now, in the remake, to be fair, there's a better explanation for how they meet. In the original, it's sort of... It's Elliot's an orphan. Pete is an orphan. And a bunch of horrible people bought him to work their farm for him. And Elliot saves him. The remake... Well... <sighs> Pete has, Pete's like five years old, car accident, and he finds a dragon in the forest, he names Elliot. So, these are simple premises, they work, um, I think Dragon World does that premise a bit better, and the story goes off from there. The original uh, doesn't do a time skip, the remake does do a time skip, and the question is, within the story, is the mystery of Pete and the mysterious Elliot. The problem is this mystery is terrible, and it's mostly the execution, so a lot of the characters in both versions are really forgettable. To, the, to both movies' credit, I found both Pete and Elliot as characters to be fun, both versions. Whether it be the remakes that take on Pete, which is, hey, he's a kid who spent the past five-ish years with a dragon living in the forest, so he doesn't really know much about the outside world anymore. That's not that weird a concept, it's just pretty much Tarzan. And the original, um, Pete and Elliot have such a really great dynamic, Elliot feels like a big kid in some ways. And the fact that he can't quite talk. Like you can sort of make out what he's saying if you really listen to apply the context clues, but that's pretty much it. And Elliot dances in the original, and it's fun, it's fun, but... A big problem both these has is that the characters don't really feel like they matter. Like, there's, it doesn't feel like there's a real effort to sort of integrate how Elliot works within the confines of the universe itself that the, both ver that both movies are trying to create, and the characters. So we're in a world where dragons can exist. Okay, what what does that mean? Both versions of the movie do imply, and sort of outright state, that Elliot exists to find people who are lost in the forest, or just, you know, kids in bad spots, Elliot shows up and he looks after them. Because by that logic, the story really should be 
the impact Pete and Elliot can have on a pretty cynical world because that's what Elliot represents hope for kids. So should it be that only kids can see Elliot? That would be cool. And then you would have the character of Grace here or Nora in the original and just sort of have it be as the remake implies that Grace met Elliot before when she was a child and that, you know, she went looking for Elliot and Elliot never showed up. She grew up jaded and bitter and sort of like, I, I imagine the whole thing. And then meeting Pete, she remembers this, remembers what it's like to believe again. Great. That doesn't happen. Grace is pretty dull. I had to actually look up her name to remember who she was. And to be fair, the original has this problem too. A lot of these characters are very, very forgettable. Which is sad because the original, they're all singing and dancing so it should be fun. And Elliot is sort of like an afterthought. Oddly enough, oddly if he's an, sort of an afterthought in both versions. Original does a better job because multiple characters interact with Elliot. But he's back. Elliot, Pete legit sends Elliot, Elliot, I need you to go look for this guy. All right? And they find him. That's it. Uh, it's just, the story really had a lot of potential. And actually, not even a lot of revolutionary potential. All right, remember Whoopi Goldberg when she, uh, this is, could be like the Santa Claus with Tim Allen or the time Whoopi Goldberg became Santa Claus. You know, jaded people finding hope again in a fairy tale. It's not hard. It's been done before. And instead of really trying to even loosely try to fix this, you have a film that really is wishing it could have been Dragon World. And Dragon World's kind of subpar, but at least it was fun. So what did you guys think of this? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Um... The reason we did this now is because, well, I'm not paying $30 for Mulan, and we'll tackle that dragon, or technically not a dragon, since, Mul since Mushu is not in this remake, and uh, yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. So I'll catch you guys later. This is Bucket Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching, and as always, may your fandom serve you well. It stinks.